Ruth, Amos, and five things we can all learn from flaming pianos. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, yeah, so my name's Ruth, uh, and I'm an inventor, and I haven't brought with, uh, with me a flaming piano, but I do have lots of videos of some of the crazy things that we build. Uh, so yeah, so I'm an inventor and engineer, uh, an occasional YouTuber, uh, and I fell into being an inventor. Uh, when I was younger, don't hold this against me, I actually wanted to be a lawyer uh, until I went to school uh, and my teacher set me the challenge to design something to help his father go up and down his stairs. And overnight I became an accidental inventor. Uh, I won an engineering award and got thrown into this whole world of engineering. Um, and it was a little bit uh, overwhelming, um, but I found that there was amazing things within engineering that I loved to do, and I kind of made it my mission. I met lots of other, particularly women, who would have been or wanted to be amazing engineers, but actually didn't see themselves as being one, and I kind of made it my mission to do something about that. So this is uh, the product that I designed uh, for my GCSE Resistant Materials project. Uh, if you're on Facebook, it's had a little uh, viral thing recently. About 60 million people have seen it across different uh, sites on Facebook recently, which is slightly bizarre. Um, but yeah, this was my first accidental invention. And it started off very simply with um, a toy, which you can see I'm sat next to. It's a metal stick, and it has on the top of it a woodpecker or a cuckoo, and you flick it, and it goes down the stick. Um, by the way, this isn't the exciting flaming piano bit. I'm just giving you a little bit of background of how I ended up doing that. Um, but yeah, and so from that toy, that was kind of my light bulb moment. And with that and a drawing, um, and a few of the stages in between, uh, I ended up with a product which we now sell across the UK and we license in uh, to America and Canada. Um, and for me, it was a really big moment to see something that I'd drawn um, become a proper product. Um, now, that was actually made in a factory, uh, but see, still seeing that process was totally eye-opening for me. And it made me look at the world in a completely different way. To see something that I had drawn on a sheet of paper become something real and tangible was a really big moment. And I spent a lot of time, I very, very nearly didn't become an engineer, and I spent a lot of time thinking about why that was, because I love engineering, I love making things, I love problem solving, and I never really saw myself in any of the engineers that I met until I was about 17 or 18. And I felt that was really sad, because actually, if I'd have known earlier on, I've seen some amazing projects that some of the young people here have been doing, and I'm just like, that could have been me, if I'd have known that I wanted to be an engineer. Um, and there are lots of, of other women and lots of other people who come from um, diverse backgrounds who don't see themselves as engineers, and it's really, really sad. Uh, and so I spent a lot of time uh, going through very, I don't want to use the word boring, but slightly more normal channels, so uh, being an ambassador, you know, consulting, helping the government put their projects together. And I am realizing this is being streamed, so I am, I'm being quite careful. Uh, but essentially, I realized that some of them were great, some of these projects, and some of them just didn't, you know, didn't show off how amazing making stuff really is. Um, and so I thought, we, we need to do more. We need to be showing young people how exciting making things really is. And me and my friend Sean got thinking about this, and Sean had also, he designed something when he was doing his A-levels, and he'd won an award, and for him that had also been a big moment, designing something and seeing it come to life. And so we thought, why, how can we do this for more young people? How can we show people that you can design and, and invent things that are actually tangible things? Because as soon as I'd seen my product being made, I looked around the world in a completely different way. I was seeing how things were made, how things were put together. I was thinking, oh, well, I could do that. I could design that. And we thought, how can we do that for other young people? And so Sean and I had a very simple idea. We wanted to take five to 11-year-olds, pictures and videos, and kind of set them a challenge, get them to send in their pictures and videos, and then each month to choose one of their drawings or their videos and bring their invention to life. It's a very simple concept, 
um, which actually needed a little bit of backing. You all make things. You know it's expensive. Uh, and so I had to pitch this idea. I was like, right. I've got this idea for a YouTube channel where we build kids' invention ideas, we film it all, we put it online, and the idea is to encourage lots of different kids who have never come across STEM to be makers and engineers. Now, my first hurdle was the word YouTube, because a lot of the people that have any sort of money for this um, are older men in suits who maybe haven't got a clue about a lot of the things that are out there on the internet. And so you can see them think, YouTube? What is that? Who even goes on that? Okay, so if you're a young person, and I'm counting young for like, well, I'm under 30, so anyone under 30, uh, who's on YouTube? Who, who watches YouTube content? Sorry, not a creator. Who watches YouTube? Anyone over 30 who watches YouTube? Funnily enough, lots of people watch YouTube. And I was trying to convince these uh, lovely men in suits, who, by the way, were fantastic, but took a little bit of convincing, that A, this was an idea we could do, and B, that actually people would watch it. Um, and me and Sean realized that a lot of the time people would say, I don't think you can do this. And so Sean and I decided we needed to convince them that we could do. And so we put together a pilot, which essentially is just having a go. We just put some stuff together and said, right, let's do this properly. Uh, let's have a go at filming some episodes. So we asked all our friends and family and people that we knew on Twitter and Facebook um, for their kids to send in ideas, and we asked for superhero invention ideas, and we got some amazing pictures, and we got some epic videos. And I thought we were just going to get some videos of like a young person saying, this is my idea, and you know, I, I think you should build this, this, and this. But people dressed up. They loved it. There was such enthusiasm. And we got all these amazing videos of young people coming up with incredible ideas and really getting into it. And we thought, ooh, this might work. Um, and a friend of ours, Lucy, um, sent in an invention idea. And as soon as we saw it, we were like, ooh, this would be a fun one. Because I knew that we were filming this pilot and we'd have to go back to the men that kept saying no uh, and show them this is an example of our project. And Lucy's invention idea was a custard firing superhero suit. And I just felt that was ridiculous enough that even if they said no, I would be highly entertained at watching these very serious men in suits watch that video. And so Sean and I set about, uh, Sean's based in Cornwall, I'm based in Sheffield. I went down to Cornwall for a weekend. We took Lucy's invention idea and we made it. We filmed the whole process, we got very stressed, things went wrong. Uh, and we filmed it all, and then we edited it together, and we took it to show these potential funders. And I mean the entertainment content in that alone. I mean, Custard Girl, I don't know if anyone's seen it, but it's beautifully fetching. She's kind of like in blue and yellow, blue and yellow lycra. Um, and yeah, it was a beautiful moment. And just seeing people's faces of like, what is this? Um, and I had a wonderful moment where a guy just sat there and went, I still don't get it. I was like, that's fine. It's not really for you. Uh, but I said, go away, show it to you. Know, I was like, do you have kids? Do you have grandchildren? Show it to them. Because, I mean, our content, I like to think it's vaguely entertaining, but it is, you know, there is an audience in mind. Uh, and so a few days later, I got an email saying, yeah, my grandkids loved it. And I was like, yes. And that was our first victory. And so we got a little bit of money to start doing this. So for the past 18 months, Sean and I, every single month, have been setting a different invention challenge to children all across the world, but predominantly in the UK. Um, and they've been sending in their amazing and incredible invention ideas as pictures or as videos. So, one of the things that, um, we've done a few projects. The Flaming Piano, which I think I've got a GIF of later, is one that really started to put the project on the map. We had a lot of kind of very well-established YouTubers kind of see it and go, Flaming piano, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, but this was another uh, invention idea that was, um, so this uh, video has had uh, over a million views on YouTube and Facebook. Um, it was picked up by Car Throttle. Uh, let's just say the comments on that were interesting. Um, and the idea was to liven up boring car journeys. Now, one of the hardest things for Sean and I is actually to work out the challenges. So we've done stuff from, uh, crazy musical instruments to getting across water. And this was about livening up long car journeys. 
And I think so often as adults, we look at things far too sensibly. Uh, so a prime example of this is that we did a challenge um, which was going to be Crazy Boat. So how to get across water, the first iteration of that that we kind of tested with a few young people was boats. And we were really surprised. The inventions we got back were maybe not as exciting, they weren't as engaged. And one little girl to me said, why? Why do I have to design a boat? And I was like, well, it's kind of the challenge, and the aim is to get across water. And she was like, yeah, but if I was getting across water, I wouldn't design a boat, I'd invent a catapult. And I thought I would much rather build a catapult. And so we changed the kind of the, the actual um, challenge to be to get from one side of the river to the other. And we got sent in backpacks. We had one girl that wanted to turn the whole lake to jelly. Uh, in the end, we made these amazing like floating shoes and this big like uh, inflatable, ridiculous suit. Um, and so sometimes I think as adults, we constrain ourselves around the question. But yeah, so this was Connor's invention idea. Connor's nine. Uh, and the idea was to liven up long car journeys. And as soon as I saw this invention idea, I could see what Connor was going for. Because let's face it, driving can be really boring. And actually, it would be so much cooler to drive three meters in the air than it would be in a car. So this is what happened when we built Connor's invention idea. Are we nearly there yet? Sean. I'm bored. But it's OK, because we built Connor's invention idea. Kids invent stuff. So this is called birthing. You like birth out the top of the car. Very regal. So you get the idea. Um, I think for us, one of the things that we love about YouTube is being really responsive. So we quite often will, we've literally closed our challenge for last month, uh, about three days ago. And within the next week, we will have built and tested that invention idea and filmed it all. Um, and I don't know any makers out there that are a little bit of perfectionist. This is a great way to solve it. Give yourself a very strict deadline. Um, and so Sean and I quite often um, spend ridiculously long hours building stuff. Um, this was another challenge. This actually was probably one of the challenges that went horribly wrong. Because as makers, we all know things don't work out first time, right? Uh, and the pressure of actually building and bringing to life someone's invention idea is quite scary. Uh, so these, uh, this was actually two, it's the first time we built two invention ideas. Um, and Sean and I, around Christmas, bought each other really ugly jackets. Like really ugly jackets. Uh, one of them was like orange and fluffy, and the other one was like, a silver denim jacket. Uh, and the challenge was to make them a bit more cooler and a little bit more exciting. And so we were sent two invention ideas. So this is Ellie's idea for a Lego jacket, which this is, this is probably one of the simplest things we've ever made. So if you want to make one, get yourself some epoxy and some Lego tape. Once you see Sean rocking this, you're going to want one of these. Uh, and the other one was from Two Boys in America, which was a illuminator jacket, so like a disco jacket. And we had this great idea. Uh, who here loves Pironi? Yeah, I love Pironi too. Uh, and we bought these amazing sewable LEDs off them, which are epic, by the way, but they're not designed to work on fluffy coats. And so we spent about five hours sewing in these LEDs. And then we tested it, and nothing happened. Uh, and in the end, we ended up getting a soldering iron and literally like burning holes in this jacket. Uh, and wiring up the inside of this jacket. I keep wanting to bring it to events, but it won't get through security because there are wires and batteries everywhere. But 
you know, it looks great on camera. Once, you know, you'll see, once you, uh, yeah, once you can have a look, you see that actually, sometimes the things that don't work out actually can uh, be, be a success. Are you fed up with looking like everyone else? Does your jacket make you look like a boring person? Then you need the latest in crazy tech jackets from Kids Invent Stuff. Designed by Genius Kid Inventors, the new Illuminator and Lego jackets combine both fashion and wearable technology to make sure you're never lost in the crowd. Using super bright LED technology, the Illuminator jackets integrated color changing LEDs ensure that everyone notices you all of the time. Built into the collar are two powerful 60 watt speakers, which when connected to your audio device, Bluetooth mode, turn your jacket into the ultimate wearable sound system. And if that wasn't enough, the Illuminator's onboard microphones allow its LEDs to light up in time to music or even in time to yours or someone else's voice. We regularly make absolute fools of ourselves. And I think by this point, we've been up for about 45 hours. Uh, and I got to the point where we just didn't care. Because the Kids Invent Stuff Lego jacket might just be the jacket you need. With a Lego compatible surface, this crazy color jacket allows you to proudly wear your Lego creations. So if you're the kind of person who likes wearing dinosaurs and Wookiees, then this is definitely the jacket for you. People love playing with Lego. So why not make them love your style too? By letting them cover your outfit with Lego. It's great for parties, particularly if you like standing around while other people attach things to you. So choose your crazy jacket today and never look like a boring person again. The previous advertisement describes garments that don't actually exist as commercial products and therefore can't be purchased anywhere in the world. So yeah, each month we've done very, very different challenges. Um, and each of them come with their own uh, beautiful issues and wonderful celebrations. Um, and sometimes I think as adults we look at the world in a really boring way and children come up with the best. They just look at something and go, yeah, but that would be so much better if... Um, and I tend to agree. I've never seen a bad invention idea. I've never gone into a school and not have a child draw me a drawing. Um, every single child in the class can draw something. And for us, it's not just about, you know, often they'll say, well, it's not the best drawing. I don't think that matters. It's about the idea. And I think so often within education, it's about how neat something is, or like, it's essentially, can you take the box? And for us, we think that actually it's about celebrating creativity. And uh, yeah, for us, I think that happens at any age. So this was uh, Xander's invention idea. And Xander was six. And we wanted inventions. This is the thing. Sometimes we get a curveball. So we wanted inventions that made boring tasks more exciting. And Xander's invention idea was because he hates shopping. Anyone here hates shopping of the food variety or the clothes variety? Yes. See, this is it. So often children see the issues within our world, uh, and one of them is shopping. And so Xander came up with the idea of a robot trolley. And so Sean and I thought we had to build that. And as part of that, so quite often we do some interesting things where we maybe don't ask for permission. Uh, so we built a robot that cooks you dinner, and we took it around Asda and didn't ask them. Um, we also put our flaming piano on the edge of a cliff. Uh, that was owned by the National Trust and apparently had some moss that was highly protected and caused a lot of havoc. Um, but you know what? The guy who rents that land from the National Trust will always remember that day. Uh, so sometimes I feel, you know, this is why I love this place. When I was talking to John, I was like, yes, yes. Um, we did ask permission for this, mainly because we realized we would have to do a lot of work. Uh, we, we wanted to film within a supermarket and we needed quite a few shots for that. I've realized it doesn't really matter because we went through, we asked permission. The staff that were working had no idea. And you know what? As long as you know the manager's name and just say, yeah, they said we could, it's usually fine. Um, so yeah, so this is Visiting Xander's the grocery play. store was once a tedious endeavor. But thanks to genius kid inventor Xander, those days are over. Boom. Kids invent stuff. Presenting. The Trolleytron 2000. 
What you see on your screens may appear to be a standard shopping cart, but you'd be gravely mistaken. The Trolleytron provides the ultimate automated retail experience. This vehicular innovation uses the latest in electronical wizardry to drive around completely unaided. Your shopping will never be the same again. Oh my! <laughs> what makes this fella so special is its onboard grocery grabber. Just look at it go. This can collecting contraption automatically gathers your groceries directly from the shelves, leaving you free to do other important things, like this, or even this. The Trolleytron carefully selects the items you require with incredible precision. <laughs> Wait, there's more. This mechanized mover of melons can even pay for your groceries. Welcome to the future. So why not order your Trolleytron 2000 today so you can be as happy as these random people? But that's all for now, so it's goodbye. I will stop sharing videos at some point, don't worry. I feel if you haven't seen the channel, you need to get an idea of some of the ridiculous things that we try and do. Um, I think sometimes I've got five things that I've learned from this project, which I'm going to do at the end. But before we do that, we're just going to look, uh, watch Annabelle's incredible. Now, this, uh, this, I feel, is a moment of genius. Now, Annabelle uh, goes to a maker club. I know that because the only thing I'm allowed to know about it is her name. Uh, they're very, very strict on, you know, can't even know her age or anything. Uh, but Annabelle came up with the idea of a sneeze-activated flamethrower helmet. Um, so we'd done our superheroes right at the beginning where we came up, you know, we asked friends and family to send in their ideas. And we decided that actually that wasn't very fair. We had, you know, young people now who were sending in invention ideas every month. and. We had lots of fun making uh, Custard Girl, and so uh, we thought we would set the challenge out again, and we weren't mistaken. There were some beautiful ideas, um, and as soon as we saw this, we thought, yes, yes. You know what? Some superheroes have amazing um, weapons, superpowers, but do you know what? If, you, if only you could sneeze fire, right? Preview is rated R for really, really dangerous. Kids invent stuff. In a world filled with incredible heroes, not all abilities are equal. I hate hay fever. But with the help of a genius kid inventor, one man changes his fortunes forever and becomes like no hero you've ever seen before. <laughs> All heroes fight crime or save the world. Some simply patrol their neighborhoods, looking for people in need. But all heroes have their weaknesses. <laughs> And all heroes have their battles and their team-ups. So this summer, stay tuned for a superhero movie like no other. Sneezing its way to a cinema near you. Thank you to Annabelle. So... People often ask me, like, how, how do, you know, as an inventor, people expect you to have had that moment where you come up with something and it's like perfect from the beginning and it isn't. Uh, quite often when you're trying to solve a problem, particularly I think the older that I've got and I try and look at, you know, when I'm designing things, it just gets very complicated. But, you know, you hear all the stuff you're taught at school, all the things you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do. And I think sometimes when we go back to basics, this is one of my favorite invention ideas. And I actually saw this being drawn at a science fair. Uh, and it started off very simply. So this is a car, um, if you can't tell. Uh, and it started off with just a giraffe at the front of it. And then the little girl that was drawing it saw that her friend next to her had put a fairy. And so hers had to be pushed by a leprechaun. 
Uh, and then suddenly they were talking about edible, um, edible roofs, edible windows, and we've got candy floss roofs. And for me, this just sums up, you look at that and you go, where on earth do you start with that? And having seen that being drawn bit by bit, you just come together. And I think so often when we, when we see kids come with invention ideas, they just don't stop. They don't think, well, this is it. This looks great. They carry on. And I think we can learn so much from that because we're so often constrained by our own rules and kids don't have that. The next thing is that things, I mean, anyone that makes stuff will know things do not work well. Um, for us, something always goes wrong. Uh, it's the joy of building in a very tight time frame with a very tight budget. Uh, this was our underwater dolphin, which for most of it didn't go underwater. And in the end, we had to cut a little hole in it and drown it. Uh, don't worry, no dolphins were harmed in this. Uh, but yeah, it was way too buoyant. And for us, something goes wrong every single build. But actually, that's something we should celebrate. If we stop when something goes wrong, we'll never complete something. And when I talk to young people about making stuff, they know that. They've seen things go wrong and they carry on. And I think as adults, we give up a little bit too easily. And actually, I've learned more from everything that's gone horribly wrong than the things that have gone right. Just because it currently doesn't exist doesn't mean that it shouldn't. Um, this is a jam-firing rocket. Uh, this is great to liven up any breakfasts. Uh, so yeah, this fires a lot of jam. Um, <laughs> it is currently at the Institute of Imagination, or else I'd really like to fire some Nutella through it. I'm just intrigued how that would work. Um, I think so often we look at things and think, well, actually, if it was a good idea, someone else would have done it. Wrong, wrong, actually. If you've got an idea, do you know what? You'll do it differently. So often I see like on Twitter, someone will go, oh, well, I started doing this, and then I found that someone else was doing something similar. So? Everyone goes at things a completely different way. And I think so often that we think, well, you know, if it was a good idea, someone else would have invented it. And that was something that I thought about a lot when I came up with the stair studies, that people said, you know, when I got my patent through, I realized that there were people that had tried to solve this problem in very different ways, and no one else had quite managed it. And I think sometimes we think, well, you know, someone that's cleverer than me or knows more than me would have invented it if it should exist. Fire, flaming piano, there we go. Don't be put off by lack of knowledge. Sean and I have no idea. We are not particularly talented engineers. Uh, I've never been to university. Sean has two degrees, because he's greedy, but one of them is in arts. Um, and essentially, we Google a lot, we watch a lot of YouTube videos, uh, and we make things up. And I think sometimes we think, well, I'm not an expert in that. How would I know? Doesn't matter. You can learn, you can have a go at things. Uh, we'd never made anything, anything that was a flaming anything, never mind a fire and water shooting piano. Uh, we did a lot of Googling, and we asked a lot of questions. And in the end, it worked. I mean. It is reasonably safe. We did have it checked by someone that knows a little bit more than us. Um, but actually, sometimes just because you don't know how you're going to get there doesn't mean you shouldn't start. Um, so yeah, this is the hill with the endangered moss that we, we didn't set it on fire, it was fine. Um, and sometimes the best ideas come from collaboration. So this, uh, we did a gravity race challenge. Uh, when I was watching the hacky races earlier, it made me laugh because, uh, yeah, I feel your pain. <laughs> Uh, so this was a gravity race, a real gravity race that we entered, uh, and we set the invention challenge. And this was Grace's drawing in the corner, and Grace wanted to build a gravity racer shaped like a cake. And a friend of ours who is uh, an engineer said, ah, yes, but why, why make it out of wood? Why make it look like a cake? Why not make it out of cake? And so sometimes having conversations with people create the best invention ideas. This is 110 kilograms of vegan cake. Uh, that I raced down a hill with very bad brakes. Um, and yes, there's a spectacular finish at the end of that. Um, but yes, sometimes the best ideas come from those conversations and telling people about your ideas and collaborating. And we did have some people eat it. And they weren't ill, which is always a bonus. So one of the things I've learned from this project, I came into it from uh, probably a very corporate-y uh, background and actually for me what's been really exciting is about embracing my inner child and just having a play and I think if we all do that more the world would be a much better place thank you thank you
Thank you very much, Ruth. Uh, I think we'll take a minute or two for questions, if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, go for it. Because I want to try out this tool. It's so <laughs> awesome. Does anyone have a question? Yes, the young gentleman in the front. Can you catch? Yeah, you can catch. We. Oui. Hey, just talk into it. Where is the microphone? Doesn't matter. Um, oops. <laughs> um, with, so, how do you send the videos in? Is there like a particular email you have to use? So we have a website called kidsinventstuff.com and there's a form on there where you can upload a picture or a video uh, and we set a different challenge each month. We set a different challenge each month. I was just looking so I could see. Yeah, yeah, uh, sorry. And there's a new one that comes out today, actually, at six o'clock. Just a little plug, you know. <laughs> Another question. Anyone else? Yeah, yes. Can you pass it on? Um, my kids absolutely love your channel. I, I absolutely love your channel as well, uh, watching it with them. I think one of the things that's, that is the secret to the success you, you kind of outlined loads of things in your talk, but one thing you didn't mention that I think just comes across in spades is the immense sense of fun in your presentation. And, and, and that, I think, is the kind of magic formula you've got. The, you've, you've got the ideas from the creativity of the, the minds of children. You've got the kind of engineering kind of know-how between you. We have no know-how. To, know -how. to no kind of turn that idea into something that actually functions. And, and you just present it with such an immense sense of fun. And Thank I think those, all three of those things are key to making this work, and, and I think it works brilliantly. Thank you. I think, I've, yeah, I've worked on lots of projects where it hasn't been fun, and I think it's really important to find things that are fun. And for us as well, it's always about challenging ourselves. So um, within this project, I've done things that I never even thought I would do, from cutting the roof off a car to learning how to use a chainsaw. Um, and I think actually when we challenge ourselves, then we can have a lot of fun. So yeah, thank you. And so yeah, I'm glad we, you had the We channel. have this young gentleman in the back. Yeah. <laughs> My invention is to make an Xbox controller. Um, Control a dirt bike. Nice, I like it. Hopefully this is what happens, is someone sees something and goes, I have an invention. I'm sure here there are people that could help you make that happen. Anyone here, like, ever made an Xbox controller? I'm looking, I've, I've seen a few around. But yes, this is what we're trying to do, is we're trying to, we're trying to encourage that, and hopefully, um, I'm sure someone afterwards can come and find you and show you exactly how you make that. Do I have to do? So, Thank one, you. one last question. They are all awesome. I would love to do another half an hour of Q&A, but last question, please, young lady. Talk into the cube. So how did you choose which one was the best? Oh, okay. So we started off this, I mean, I don't want to think of it as a competition, but funnily enough, it has become one. So when we started, Sean and I were very naive because we thought we'd just get these invention ideas in, we'd have a look at all of them, we choose to build one, and that would be it. But actually, it has been viewed as a competition. Um, but we don't see it like that. So we look at all the invention ideas, and then we have to think, there are a few things. We have a little bit of limited budget. So can we afford to make it? Has it been made before? So quite often, we'll have invention ideas, and there are things that are partway towards that, or people that have made that. Um, and so occasionally, we have sent emails back to kids saying, this is a fab idea. Have you seen this? So-and-so has done this. Um, and then other times is, we like to choose invention ideas that adults would never think of. So when we did the floating shoes, um, I, you, know, you kind of mention it to a few adults and they look at you like you're mental. And so for us, it's about celebrating things like, of course you want a pair of shoes that walk on water. Of course you want a jam firing rocket. So yeah, we, we have that little inner adult in our heads going, if you're an adult, you'd never build this. And that's what we want to build. Well, are you, are you around at a, a village or yes. somewhere? Yes, yeah, I'm around outside for a bit. So because yeah. we, we, we have to sum up. Yeah. So <laughs> if, if you have further questions or ideas, uh, come up to Ruth and, and, and bother her. And if you bring Lego, maybe she will help you turn on a new Yeah, oh yeah, code. definitely. <laughs> so uh, please give another very warm round of applause for Ruth. Thank you very much. <laughs>